Hi, and welcome to Chef Ray's Treasures of Food. It's all about color with Chef Ray's Treasures of Food. If there's no color on the plate, I'm not going to eat. I want to eat before I taste the food, so therefore there has to be color on that white plate. Simple as that. So today, I am with my cousins from Canada. They actually found me back in 2000, Joni and Joe, 2009. 2009. And then they introduced me to my other lost long cousins, Dave, Lisa, Kathy, Brother Mike, Jill, Jill and Debbie. On today's episode, I've written it as Risotto with my cousins from Canada because Kathy and Lisa loved my risotto. They always ask the question like, how can you do so many risottos, Chef Ray? And because if you look at a risotto recipe, it basically tells you to stand over a pot and stir it for about an hour and a half. Well, I'm gonna give you the treasures of risotto, the easy components to make multiple risottos at the same time and basically make you a rock star. Today with my cousins from Canada, I'm basically doing some of the favorite recipes that they would um, eat in the restaurant. And my all time signature coconut shrimp that Lisa loves. She personally requested them today. Um, they're marinated in fresh coconut milk. Uh, there's coconut, there's a little bit of uh, um, cake flour. Of course, like I always say, I'm a lover of cake flour. That's on the batter and then they're lightly um, tossed in coconut and deep fried, but they're wonderful. So, who wants to taste the coconut shrimp? Lisa? Lisa. Lisa, and we'll let Jill taste one. They are delicious. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Dave. Don't give Joe one, he's allergic. I know. <laughs> Kathy, I've got chicken for you, don't feel bad. If it's not fat fried, 40 weight gravy, and the, the best of all, he's gotta have his catfish and his chicken wings. So we've got fresh catfish here for Dave, along with some waffles that I'm gonna pull out here in a minute. As you can see, the beautiful thing about life is um, Joe and Joni talked about meeting me back in 2009 and what we're 2021, so that's what, 11 years? 11 years? So, 12 years. So, that's, I'm glad my cousins found me. All right, Dave. There's your chicken. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the joke that we have, I have running with Dave, right? He was like, Chef, you don't just know how to cook for five people. And uh, so I was telling Kathy, er, well, was it Kathy? Yeah, Kathy. I said, Kathy, and I told Dave this as well. I, I said, you know, you notice I used to bring 10 different cakes, whole cakes. <laughs> so I decided that I would do them in pedophil styles. So Kathy and I started laughing and I said, I've got the, um, the portion size down now. Now I've got to get the quantity size down. <laughs> as you can see, we're all so still one a, step <laughs> one step at a time. We also have uh, that we're, we're celebrating other just this uh, family and friendship. Um, two, three birthdays. We have January the 30th, February 1st. 11th, January. And January the 11th. Actually, four. Oh, four birthdays. Oh, really? Four birthdays. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow, okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> so, Your 29, right? exactly. Kathy, a year ago, post pre-COVID, I had my book signing, which was, as you can see, they have all of them. <laughs> They're proud supporters of their cousin, Chef Ray. Um, but I, last year I had uh, my um, pre-COVID book signing, 15 years and 12 minutes. And when I made the call to them to, to make sure they were gonna be in town, now I'll tell you, I called them first to make sure they were gonna be in town before I even selected to date. That tells you how important the cousins from Canada are. 
And Lisa told me, she says, well, you know, that's Kathy's birthday. I said, well, tell her to come. I'll have some good food. And then what's her favorite cake? And then Lisa, she's the leader if you hadn't figured that out yet. <laughs> uh, she said, German chocolate cake. So I said, well, the fact that she's going to spend the evening with me on her birthday, I'll do a German chocolate cake. So again, you got your German chocolate cake. But this year is actually my new pound cake that I've developed that's German chocolate. So you'll have to tell me what you think. The other one was fabulous. Thank you. Now. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the dogs, as you can hear now. Uh, my dear friend. <laughs> I guess they heard me talking to them. Lisa and Dave and Debbie are involved with Rescue Pet Movement. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Lisa for a moment and tell you guys a little bit about uh, the pet rescue and all the work that they do. Um, and how proud I am that they're pet rescue. Well, thanks, Chef Ray. It's always a great opportunity to talk about my passion, which is animal rescue. And we've been fortunate to work with Rescued Pets Movement um, since 2013, basically when they came into existence. Um, the real critical thing about Houston, is, if you don't know, is we have a very, very large homeless pet population, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of probably a million to 1.2 million pets. Um, are homeless in the Houston area. Um, what Rescued Pets Movement has done is partnered with rescues in other states where there is a demand for pets and we basically predominantly have, all, have rescued from Bark, which is the county animal shelter in Houston, but we branched out to some smaller shelters outside of Houston, Harris County we've rescued from, and we've just tried to expand this to save as many animals, predominantly dogs and cats. We have saved pigs, we have saved rabbits, so it's we're not exclusive, but we my focus is pretty much dogs. And the objective is to bring the dogs in to temporary foster homes, anywhere from just a few days to maybe a few weeks, uh, give them a feeling of what it's like to be home. Then we transport them through vans um, two, to, two times a week. They go to Colorado, Illinois, Virginia, California. We've had dogs in Canada now. Um, it's a great experience. It's a great feeling because you know you're saving lives. You are literally saving lives. So, as you will hear and have heard, many, many, many dogs in my house. We have six personal rescues. Um, we currently have a foster right now. Her name is Cheyenne. She's headed to Colorado on Tuesday. We are grateful for the opportunity. Interestingly enough, and it kind of ties back into Chef with his time at the Rockets when the owner was Leslie Alexander. Leslie Alexander is a generous supporter and sponsor of, of animal rescues and many rescues. Leslie actually funded the building that Rescued Pets Movement is in today. It is named after his father, Jack C. Alexander. And so I feel like that's part of the come full circle is the fact that as we've known Chef over the years, we've had more connections than just his obviously food, friendship, fellowship, and family, we've also had a rescue connection. So rescuedpetsmovement.org, always looking for fosters, always looking for funds, always looking for ideas for how to make the streets of Houston free of homeless pets, dogs, cats. We appreciate support. We appreciate people just spreading the word and sharing knowledge about what is possible, which is really around spay and neutering of your pets. So we love Chef, we love our pets. I think most everybody loves pets. I think food, family, friends, um, dogs, cats, you name it. It's a great combination. Whenever I get with my Canadian cousins, it's always a blast, but most important, uh, as one of my um, wait staff in the restaurant when they would come to the restaurant she would say oh they have expensive wine <laughs> and uh, it's the good stuff but uh, I'm I, I love wine but they're actually not just lovers of wine but they're educators of wine so Lisa uh, has been has given me the honor to actually be able to go into a cellar today and she's gonna talk a couple minutes about wines but this is one of my greatest and funnest wine societies that I've, I've worked for 
over the years. <laughs> so, cousins from Canada, cheers. 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 Welcome to the cellar. We, as Jeff said, we love our wine. We love sharing our wine. We love obviously drinking wine. This wine represents a lot of friendship. Friendships we've made throughout the United States. We've been to Chile. We've been to Italy. We've been to France. But if you look around this room, it's a lot of bottles, but it's not a lot of bottles. It's a lot of memories. It's a lot of sharing. It's a lot of family. It's a lot of friends. It's just who we are and hopefully someday you'll be able to enjoy whether it's wine or whether it's rescue whether it's just being with each other especially in these times pick out a bottle enjoy it share it with your friends share it with your family but always be together be as one and make it a great day cheers memories that you have oh we went to hall that was such a great experience do you remember when right you know so you know when you pull the bottles out that is really when you start reminiscing and creating that memory dave told me when i drove up he said look chef we love you but do not put me on film but i had to put him on film because as you can see this stool that's holding about 270 pounds of my big lard behind. Um, Dave actually makes these. And we were talking the wine, we were talking wine, and um, basically, Dave, tell me, tell us how you do this. Uh, it's just a wine box. It's the legs. wine box that their wine comes in that they have shipped. I built some legs for it, and hook in the tops, and that's pretty much it, man. Yeah. So. When I turned 50 some five years ago, he gave me two of them for my 50th birthday and I actually auctioned them off with wine for my birthday for the Ronald McDonald House Charities. So Dave being the great brother that he is and the cousin from Canada, he bestowed me with two, but I'm not gonna be selfish. I actually gave my videographer one, O'Shea. So he's got his keepsake as well. Thank you, Dave. Good wine. You're gonna eat here just in a second. As soon as we get these two beautiful ladies to make a risotto. We are gonna try you to try that. Hey, hey. I, 20 minutes. I did. Cook, <laughs> so ladies. So cook. I'm excited to watch. All righty. So, as I stated, this episode is risotto with my cousins from Canada. And the reason why I selected this episode with risotto is because they love my risotto. Now, the treasures of risotto is that everybody loves risotto. There's one or two things that can happen. First and foremost, most people don't want to stand over a pot and stir for two hours. That's the first problem. The second problem is eventually, by the time you finish cooking the risotto, it looks like mush, more like broccoli rice versus risotto. The goal is, right, is that we want to keep the same composition of the risotto, which is the aboro rice, when we go to plate it, right? So that being said, the treasure is, I actually prepare the aboro rice a day before and I refrigerate it. So we're at room temperature here, ladies. Now, I want to introduce my two uh, great sous chefs this evening. I have Lisa and I have Kathy. Now, when they would come to the restaurant, Lisa is the spice, right? So she loves the Cajun. Kathy, she's the loving, understanding. <laughs> if I forget something, she's always there to help. So she loves the Florentine, which is spinach base. So we're going to show you the quick, easy way to do multiple risottos within five minutes and feed the hungry crowd that's behind us. So, so ladies, you ready? Oh, well, you see, the spice is still holding the bottle of wine, you can go ahead and put that down, Lisa. I'll hold it, no, I'll hold I'm it. Gonna, I can I'm, hold I'm it. I'm gonna pour it. I know, not yet. No, okay, not so yet. grab, okay, so we're gonna start with our olive oil, right? Add a little bit of olive oil to the pan, because now what we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna saute our shallots. Who doesn't love shallots, right? Everybody loves shallot, okay. That'll work. And let's turn you up a little bit. Let's go like to six. On both ends, there you go. See, they both know the rounds in the kitchen, right? Yeah. So let's, mm. you have your shallots. Shallots. There you go. And I'll shallots. take your, throw them in there. Mm -hmm. There you go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Waste not. <laughs> that smells good. 
Yours was extra hot because yours is almost translucent. Let Lisa catch up here in a minute. I'm holding the, the glazer. Actually, this is what I'm drinking tonight, which is a Bello. Bello, Bello, and it's it is really good. Yeah. So, Kathy's ready to deglaze because we don't want to burn the shallots. Oh my God! Doesn't that smell good? Is that intoxicating or what? Kathy has the spinach, so let's take all your spinach in there. There's a couple secrets that I can't say on air, but I will give to you at the end of the night. Now, and you're not gonna believe what it is, okay? Okay. Alrighty, so you ready to deglaze? You ready? Okay, so, okay, so. We're gonna take, okay, so the, she's got Cajun risotto. This is tomato paste, tomato sauce, there's bell peppers, onions, garlic, shallots, there's some parsley in there, and cayenne, all righty? There's fresh, there's Rotel tomatoes, right? Anytime you need some type of tomato, use Rotel. All righty, so let's take our risotto, because we've got our base in there. All right, so now the, the goal is, now this is the quick part, because it doesn't take long for the risotto to heat. We've halved it and halved it. You're all right. Okay, so chicken stock. We're gonna add a little chicken stock. Lisa, you probably don't need much, but blend all that in there. And since you're spiced, Lisa, we're gonna add a little bit of Old Bay. That's O-L-D and then Bay. Has that New England flavor. Mm. Yum. All righty. For my loving, understanding sister over here, we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to hers. All righty. All right, so now we're going to come with a little bit of, I don't use heavy cream. I use actually evaporated milk to kind of keep it healthy. Really? That's why she relates to you, Kathy. That's right. You relate to her. Yeah. No, when I was going over the ingredients, she liked that when I told her. She approved of it. That's right. So now we've got grated Parmesan and Romano. Mm. And then we're gonna add our five cheese Italian blend, which you can buy out of any store, right? right. And guess what? Since we're being sophisticated tonight with this unbelievable wine, let me put my glasses up. <laughs> now literally, guys, seriously, when they would come into the restaurant, my, my cousins from Canada, I live, it was like a day off. They would literally rent my restaurant off for the night. And I would, I would hope they had done it every night, but I mean, you can't they do it every night. Lot. They did a lot. They did it at least twice a month. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they did it twice a month. But they literally, this is what we would do. They would come in, we would cook, and Lisa would literally tell me, sit down, get a glass of wine, and I'm literally sitting there and they're doing the cooking. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it up a notch. Who doesn't love truffle oil, right? Uh. So we're gonna add a, just a pinch of truffle oil. Not much, just a little bit, just to take it to the next level. Now, what I love about truffle oil is that it has such a distinct flavor that when you go to, to eat whatever it's been added to, you actually taste it on the back end. So it gives it a really rich, just a really rich, sophisticated flavor. So don't over stir, because we don't want to lose our composition. Alrighty, so I'm gonna give you a little bit more chicken stock to thin you out just a little. Lisa's, her, 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 we've got your composition just right. Alrighty, so it's the cheesy over here. Isn't that good? Okay, so now, as chefs, the first thing that you have to do, excuse me, I have to move, is I always tell people, the chefs that work for me, if you don't taste it and if you don't eat it, don't give it to me. <laughs> so let's see what I need to taste both as well. Good balance. Good balance. Good balance. 
Let's see. Mm. I did oh. really well. Huh? That, I'm yeah, following up with you. I know, right? I'm I'm not, not, yeah. Right. Try this one. Try okay, this one. let me try spice over here. Spice? Mm. Oh. Mm. But Are guess what? It's a beautiful balance because <laughs> I sat in between two beautiful women. So the winner is me. <laughs> cheers, to you. cheers! 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 Pure culinary. All righty, let's eat. Let's eat. So as you can see, the composition in the risotto, you can still see that that's risotto, correct? Yes, sir. You can actually see it from over there, right? Yeah. See how simple that is. You see how simple it is? So you can make risotto. Now the wonderful thing, if you got leftover chicken, you got leftover crab, you got leftover lobster, whatever you got leftover protein-wise, throw it in and you make it a full meal. As I stated, Joni and Joe came into my restaurant in 2009 and here it is 2021. And uh, literally, we're like family and that's why I call them my cousins from Canada. They are there, have always been huge supporters of Chef Ray and whatever, um, I asked of them, they've always been there. My heart is warm and happy, and I'm just honored to be able to share uh, some beautiful people, some beautiful relatives, cousins with you, as I call them. And it's all about fun, fellowship. You've learned some treasures, particularly with risotto. As you can see, risotto is not one of those hard dishes to make if you just follow some of the treasures that, I, that you actually get to see in the episode. But I wanna thank uh, Lisa and Dave for, for hosting. Uh, this evening. Oh, no, I really did like that. Salute to Chef Ray's Treasures of Food. <laughs>